Why did the SRX series fail? So if you haven't heard by now, Tony Stewart's SRX series has suspended their 2024 race season, albeit they already have sold tickets for a number of races, which leaves them in a bit of a predicament here, at least the tracks do, which is really unfortunate because short tracks around America that were going to host these races certainly don't need that level of headache and have to put in those level of man hours to figure all of this out. So that part is highly unfortunate. But why did SRX fail altogether? Their business model just didn't work, and that's really the biggest issue right here. According to people within SRX or close ties, the cost of SRX just became unsustainable. They couldn't afford it anymore. They were just hemorrhaging money because the series wasn't making money. When the series was first debuted, it seemed cool, right? It was a modern iteration of IROC, supposed to bring together all of these stars and put them in a generic, same body car, same horsepower, same setup, same everything, and then go out there and see who was the best. And sure, SRX wasn't the most legitimate championship ever. We had competition cautions, you had Tony Stewart getting out to a lead and then somehow just fading back to the pack just to pull away again. It was all for show, which was fine. It was an entertainment product first, and at least it knew that's what it was versus maybe sometimes what NASCAR does. But overall, it was a fun product. The problem was it just didn't make financial sense when you really think about it. So it's a six race championship, right? Six consecutive weeks throughout the summer, which is great, except for the fact that you now have essentially 46 down weeks for the rest of the year. That's not ideal. Now you have to employ a staff to travel the country for those six weeks, and then you basically have to lay them off, and you have a few full-time employees, but that's still a big overhead to pay people throughout those other 46 weeks when you're not bringing in any money. So when SRX debuted with Tony Stewart, Ray Abraham, and a couple of other business executives behind the scenes that were funding this, it was fun. It was interesting. It was on Saturday nights on Network CBS, so on Big CBS. That's huge. Everybody's like, oh, we got to get more racing on Network. They did it. They expected 3 million viewers each week. They got about, on average, 1.3 million. So that's less than half for the math whizzes at home. Not ideal. So when CBS decided not to continue the relationship after the second season, they then went over to ESPN. And ESPN rebirthed the Thursday Night Thunder. Revived? Probably the better word to use it. Revived Thursday Night Thunder and put SRX on Thursday nights during the summer. Which was great except it just never really got the viewership they were hoping for. They averaged 436,000 viewers. So that drop-off in viewership also resulted in a drop-off in TV revenue, which means that SRX was taking in less money. Then you look at their sponsorship model, which was interesting to say the least. You had Camping World sign on as the title sponsor of the series, which is great, but it wasn't necessarily what you know NASCAR is making, and they still have to fund these 13 cars essentially to travel the country each and every week. It's not like Tony Stewart could pawn off the cost of the cars to the teams like NASCAR does right now. If you want to run a NASCAR, you have to buy a car and it's up to you to maintain and improve and rebuild it if there's a crash. In SRX, if you wreck a car, you have to then fund it out of your own pocket, out of the SRX budget. They own and operate all of the cars. So like I said, they couldn't pass that expense off to a team owner or to a driver. It was like, oh, you, we have to cover this now. And when you have a guy like Paul Tracy out there absolutely thrashing cars each and every week, you know, cost added up pretty quickly, especially over the 2023 season. You had a number of big time incidents. I, off the top of my head, when we had the car blow up going into turn one, and then it ended up totaling, uh, what, two or three cars maybe, or at least really taking them down, that didn't work out very well. So that's a financial hit there. And then you look at the sponsorship model, and it felt like most of the sponsors that we saw on the cars were B2B sponsors for the series. We saw Goodyear, Fram, uh, and a couple other ones show up on cars more often than not, and it's like, well, is that just the sponsor for the series that the series is then putting on the car as like an added, you know, make good in a sense of being like, oh yeah, you supply us with these tires and then or at a discount, and then we'll put you on the car which is great, except again, it doesn't really put money into your pocket necessarily. Sure, it helps lower the cost. And then we saw some drivers bring along a couple different sponsors uh, here and there, but overall, it wasn't enough to really sustain what SRX needed. And that's unfortunate because I think that SRX does have a spot in the motorsport landscape. It's just a little crowded at the moment, and I don't think that it's necessarily gone forever. I think that it will be revived in some sort of iteration and the 
coincidence of Ray Evernham announcing the comeback of IROC this week and then SRX two days later announcing that they're suspending their season have nothing to do with one another. That's just a coincidence. I see a lot of people out here being like, oh, that's why SRX shut their doors because IROC is back and it, Ray left. Ray left over a year and a half ago. He may have still been an investor, but Ray going to IROC and potentially pulling out his money isn't what sunk SRX. IROC coming back is just a coincidence. It's like Mike Vrabel getting fired by the Titans and the Patriots then firing Bill Belichick and everybody being like, oh, well, this is where Vrabel's going to go and then they hire Gerard Mayo. Just a coincidence that things happen at the same time. There's no direct correlation between the two of them and that's what happened here. So for SRX, it's just a bummer to see it go away in the fashion that it did because SRX did do a lot of fun things. They used a drone on a broadcast way better than we've seen any other motorsport entity use it outside of maybe World of Outlaws. They had fun. They revived Alan Bestwick in the motorsports uh, you know, universe and brought him back to call races, which was great. They had driver interviews, driver doing driver interviews after each heat, which is pretty entertaining. You also had in-race interviews with Tony Stewart talking to him and then him being like, hey, dude, I'm going to set up a pass right here. And then you had Connor Daly and James Hinchcliffe straight up spotting for other guys during the race, which was really entertaining. And that's exactly what it was, entertainment. It was never supposed to be, like I said, a serious championship. You got to see the Elliots run together at the fairgrounds and pack that track out, which was really cool. The Blaney's run together up at Sharon Speedway in Ohio. Again, all these great moments, but it was just never enough to really springboard SRX into the mainstream even. One of the biggest downfalls of SRX was their inability to attract a huge name driver. So SRX in their first season, they had a bunch of drivers, right? They had Willie T. Ribs, Michael Waltrip, Elio Castro Neves, Marco Andretti, Tony Stewart, and then they would bring in like a local hero, local short track hero, Doug Kobe at Stafford, goes out there and wins the race. Awesome. They go to Slinger, Luke Fenhouse, basically springboards his career, so he's now an ARCA, and he finishes second in that race. It did a lot in that first season, but there was never really like that star driver that they needed. SRX really needed a Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Carl Edwards, somebody like that to come along and run a full season. Somebody that's going to bring in a ton of fans, and ultimately they never got that. They got some big name drivers, but they never got anybody that was like going to set them over the top. You can only watch Paul Tracy and Haley Deegan run into each other so many times before you're like, okay, I've seen this episode before. Let's move on to the next thing. It's like the B episode in Breaking Bad. You're like, why are we just watching this? It is completely pointless. We could have much better television than this. It's a heck of a callback. But overall, it just never really got where it needed to go. And that's unfortunate. And then in this third season, they tried to bring star power in, right? They brought in Brad Keselowski to run a full season with SRX. They brought Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch in to run one-offs. And guess what? Those guys are really good on short tracks, and they went out there and absolutely dominated these races. So SRX, again, their biggest downfall was their inability to attract huge talent to come and at least run one season with them. And then outside of that, it was the inability to really control the cost, bring in new sponsors, and then find a media partner where it just was more feasible than what it was. I hope that SRX comes back. Again, like I said, I think there's a place for it in the motorsport landscape. I just don't necessarily think that in that current iteration was a spot for it. And you knew that they were in maybe some financial hurt when you hear them, hear them talking about on the broadcast before the race is like, oh yeah, hope we don't tear up too much equipment this week because, you know, we don't have anything to repair it with. And then by the time the cars get to the sixth race of the season, they look like a Wayne Peterson Arca car. They're held together with rivets and duct tape. And you're like, I don't know if this thing's even track worthy at this point. But it was a fun show overall. Exactly what it was. A show. So, Ravenham bringing IROC back had nothing to do with it. SRX biggest downfall at the end of the day was just their inability to control cost, the current market conditions, as they say. Sure, things are more expensive, but I think there's a path forward for them, and I hope that they do figure it out. So let me know in the comments, uh, what do you think is wrong with SRX? Was it the sponsorship? Was it the drivers that they had? Or was it just their inability to really capture that TV audience? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.